Hello. Hello, hello. Well, thank you, Kaylee, for checking in. I'll miss you in the stream today, but we appreciate you. Hello, Esra. Good to see you. It's been a hot second since I've seen you on stream, but I'm happy you're here. It's another Avatar stream today, guys. It is... Mm, got my second COVID vaccine, and your girl has been... Uh, I oh, don't know, I'm a mess, so it's a <laughs> it's a time for another Avatar stream. Excuse me. <sighs> Ugh. God. It's fine, I know you got your own life to live. No worries, no worries. Our drink of the day today is water because hydration is key. Especially with allergies. Alrighty. I don't know if you've been keeping up with uh, what's been going on in the stream, but boy, this island is all sorts of crazy. We are 55.6% done with the antidote for this catification process. And we are currently um, hanging out with Trixie, our resident witch cat. Good luck on your exams. I know a lot of students are struggling with midterm exams right now. And yes, I am taking care of myself. I am drinking water. And resting until I have to go back to work. So, we are now on our fourth research assistant, Cat 4, uh, because <laughs> one got shot, two turned into a cat, three got shot, allegedly, and now we're on Cat 4. And we're gonna see if uh we're just gonna see if everything is okay so without further ado let's go forgot about the extras and sherlock sherlock three Let's see what nonsense he's got for us today, because we unlocked a Sherlock cat. Oh, I don't like this music. Oh shit, I think I already did this one. Did we... Crap! I forgot I already did that one. <laughs> okay, go back. Start over. We're on Sherlock 4, not Sherlock 3. Okay. Yes, boat. Okay. I've been helping with the deliveries this morning. There are only three boxes left, which I'm attempting to carry in one run so that the final box is perched precariously on top of the other two. Bob recommends I only take two at a time, but I want to get on with other things. That's a mood, that's me. Yes, the mountains are cats, cause it's Cat Island. I'm inching my way blindly along the jetty path, regretting my impatience, when suddenly something flies out of nowhere and all three boxes go scattering in front of me, tripping me up into the bargain. What the? Are you bowing before me? I know who that infuriating voice belongs to before I look up. Sherlock, what are you doing? You scared me half to death. Hello? 
Allow me to help you up. We are most terribly sorry. At least Watson has manners. Thank you. I'm sure you are, Watson, but I find it hard to believe he understands what sorry feels like. Sorry is a word, my dear. You cannot feel a word. He's about to launch into one of his rhetoric marathons, so I interrupt him before it's too late. He's like a juggernaut, very difficult to stop once he's at full speed. Never mind all that. Why are you here? I didn't call for you. Exactly. You didn't call, so I needed to come unannounced. I have news. A breakthrough. Really? I have been ruminating. The picture is becoming clearer. More of the dots are joining. This great jigsaw that is overwhelming you has just found another piece. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a corner piece. He's so frustrating. Are you saying you found something out? Well, indeed. I'm not so sure. Something highly significant has come to me. Oh? Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Watson is so skeptical. In a dream! Oh. Yes, afraid so. The greatest thinkers of all time have relied upon the hallucinatory guidance of dreaming. Not the dreams of the sleeper, shut down and flabby. No! The dreams I speak of are self-induced, insightful from a trance. The opening of the subconscious mind while the frontal lobe is distracted. Hypnotism. Sorry? He's talking about self-induced hypnosis. He practices it a lot. It looks a lot like sleeping. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! I am trying my best. <laughs> I don't think it's perfect, but I'm glad you enjoy it. <clears throat> so you may as well tell me, now that you've caused such mayhem. I look around and see that one of the boxes has burst open when it hit the ground, and the contents are scattered around us. I begin to gather them up when Sherlock snatches one out of my hands. The very proof! This, Watson, this is what I'm talking about! Tins of tuna? What about them? I've tried to tell him. To you, these may be innocent tins of tuna, but to me, they represent the corruption and deceit. That is at the very heart of this godforsaken island and the cult that inhabits it. This again? He thinks he's worked it all out. And so I have, if you will all stop jabbering for one moment and allow me to speak. Watson and I exchange a look of exasperation and allow Sherlock to take center stage. <laughs> Lady's Choice, is that a... Uh, God, what is it? Queen... No. Queen's Choice? Is it Queen's Choice? Because I'm... I, I started playing that and I'm watching the anime for an episode of Reverse Harem Rants whenever the fuck I get back to that again. Oh. Okay. Lady's Choice. Alright! Yeah, if it's not the game that I'm thinking of, then sure. This! He holds up the tin of tuna again. Is no ordinary can of fish. It is more like a can of worms. The most cursory of investigation uncovers that what we really have here is the contraband of these two latter-day pirates who plunder the waters of the wider ocean and peddle their ill-gotten gains to the unsuspecting merchants on the mainland. I lean in close to Watson so that Sherlock doesn't overhear me. Joe and Bob? Yes. Pirates? Would seem so. 
Their unscrupulous fishing methods have drawn the attention of the world-renowned vigilante environmentalist army, Libre Ver, who have hounded them across the salty battlefields and forced them to retreat into hiding here within your very cult. He's gone mental, hasn't he? Oh, okay, so it's indie. All right, yeah, I like indie stuff. I'll go ahead and give that a shot. I fear so. Here amidst the drug peddlers and the cross-dressers under the protective... Whoa! Hold it there, Sherlock. Say that last bit again. In spite of your mulish refusal to accept the truth, the caretakers and the security guard... Zane? The very same! Cross-dressing? Watson emits a small groan and bows his head. <laughs> I'm... G <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea what these extras are. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Honestly, I feel like it's comedic relief. It's just also absurd. Yo, I love Vic stuff in the Victorian era is right up my street. Definitely. How else would you explain the bottles of nail varnish, the perfumed skin creams, the nylon stocking size XXL, all flung indiscriminately around the camp with the abandon of a cheap burlesque? Let me just stop you right there for one moment, you utter numpty. Oh, steady. Not that it would matter if one, uh, not that it would matter one jot if anyone chose to cross-dress, or that it would be any of your business. But just for the sake of accuracy, allow me to educate you. The nail varnishes belong to a previous research assistant. The stockings are used in the hope of catching small airborne life forms that might help our research. And as for the creams, that is the mystery that I've been investigating and researching since my arrival on this island. A mystery that you, oh great detective, have been no help with whatsoever. Ah, uh, ah, uh, now, notice, if you will, the word research was used several times in my statement. That's because I'm a scientist, and in science we do not present a prognosis unless we have done the research to uncover sufficient evidence to lend our findings credibility. There are no facts underpinning your theories, Mr. Holmes, and that reduces them to the level of balderdash. I see the way it is. The truth can be hard to swallow, and with hurt pride as an accompaniment, it may be altogether unpalatable. Perhaps, Watson, it would be kind to leave our client to digest these revelations in private. That's possibly the most insightful idea you've had so far. When you see how wrong you've been and how right I am, you will be grateful that I have spared you public humiliation. Watson has got to his feet and is tugging on Sherlock's coat sleeve. Indeed, my friend. Let's go and eat some of this excellent tuna for lunch, and you can explain to me how you've managed to solve this ticklish conundrum so brilliantly. I stand with my mouth open, watching them leave, not quite believing what I'm hearing, when Watson turns back to me and winks. It's a small gesture, but it makes everything fall into place. Of course Watson knows it's nonsense, but he allows Sherlock to believe he's right, simply because he loves his friend and accepts him for who he is. No embarrassment. I feel touched as I be uh, bend down to pick up the remaining tins of fish. We could all do with a bit of that in our lives. Achievement unlocked. Elementary. Okay. I think... Because research has to be the last thing we do on the island. Because the research would indicate that Cat 4's time has come to an end. So, 
I think we're going to do romance, recon, romance, then research. And then poor cat two is, or poor cat four. God, why did I say two? We're on cat four. Poor cat four is going to leave us. Okay. Let's go hang out with Trixie. I don't have long, Trix. It's a busy day in the lab today. Lots of deliveries. Trixie is pulling at the corners of the cloth she's laid on the ground. I know you're a very important and humanly person, but I think you'll be pleased you gave up a bit of your time for this. She's produced a small box wrapped in pretty paper with a ribbon around it. Oh my gosh, where did you get this from? Did you wrap it yourself? There is no need to sound so surprised. I thought you knew by now I'm a very clever cat. Well, open it. Oh, I don't want to spoil it, but... I tear off the paper and bows and I toss them away. Trixie leaps on them, delightedly playing cat and mouse. Come on, Humi! Need help? No, it's mine! We tussle for the box playfully, and eventually I retrieve it and take off the lid. Oh, wow, Trix. It's the... Quake Stone! Oh, she found his rock. Oh, of course. It's lovely. Trixie starts to laugh. Oh, Humi, you're so funny! It's not lovely at all. But it is useful. She's right. It's not lovely. It's an ugly looking chunk of stone about the size of a walnut. Pinkish gray. But mostly gray. Useful? Does it do something? Pick it up. Ooh, that's why they call it a quake stone. I take the lump from the box and instantly feel a vibration in my hand. Whoa, that's weird. What is it? The feeling is spreading up my arm and through my torso. Can you feel it? That's the quake. It's from the danger zone. What? You went to the danger zone? Well, no, not personally, but I know someone who has. Who? And how? Quake stone. It alters your energy, transforms your frequency. It makes you in tune with the danger zone so you don't get zapped. Wait. Are you saying that if I hold this, I could go into Elder Cat territory? That's right, Humi! That's my gift to you. Protection. I have a hundred questions competing to be asked, but I know I have to get back to the lab. Trixie, you are an angel. Let's meet up another time to discuss where you got this and how to use it. All right. We gotta... Yes! I knew it would unlock another recon! All right. Every time we get a gift from a cat, we unlock more recon missions. Let's go! Recon 17. Let's go, let's go. The stone that Trixie found is fascinating. I've just got to take a closer look at it. Geological experiments. The professor is away on an overnight trip to the mainland, so I've got the lab to myself for a while. I've been running tests on the quake stone that Trixie gave me for hours now, and I'm no closer to understanding how it works. It emits a constant pulse, but I can't figure out where the energy needed to generate the vibration is coming from. Looking at it under the microscope, the structure seems less like a gem and more... organic? It looks like very smooth interlocking scales which move and shift very slowly. It's as if the rock breathes. I sit back and try to clear my head. I wonder. An idea has been half-forming at the back of my mind all day, but now it's loud and clear. 
I need to go to the Elder Cat's territory and see if I can't join some of the dots up in situ. Situ? I decide it would be foolhardy to head to the danger zone alone, so I alert McMurphy to my plan, and he agrees to meet me there. Of course it's McMurphy. I throw a few things that I think could come in handy into my backpack and set off, swinging by Zane briefly to let him know I'm out of the grounds for a couple of hours. He's on his seat down by the water's edge. Hi, Zane. Waiting for the supply boat? He doesn't bother to look up from his paper. No, that's not till tomorrow. To bring the professor back. Ah, okay. Just catching some rays then, eh? He carries on looking at his paper and doesn't respond. Well, just wanted to let you know I'm going on a field trip today. Now he shows an interest. Aren't you meant to stay at the camp when the professor is away? In case something happens to one of the cats? Yes, strictly speaking, but everyone is doing fine and I only intend to be gone for an hour or two. You can cope, can't you? It's not a question of me coping. It's a question of you breaking the rules. My heart sinks. But if it's important, then I expect you have to do what you think is right. I'm taken aback. I get the feeling he's giving me his blessing without saying it. Thanks, Zane. Wise words. I turn to head back up the jetty path. But it might be a good idea to let me know where you're going, just in case. They're all fine, I promise you. My concern was for you. Oh, Zane, I'm touched. But I'll be fine too. Thanks for caring. Even so. I feel under pressure to tell him where I'm going, but I'm worried he'll stop me. I decide to come clean and hope for the best. Heading up to the other end of the island. To the danger zone? Elder territory, yes. Be careful, then. I will. And I get away before he can change his mind. I wonder why he was so easygoing about me sneaking off to the danger zone while the professor is away. Maybe Zane's not so bad, after all. I haven't seen any sign of McMurphy. We said we'd meet here on the border of the danger zone. I am squeezing the quake stone in my hand and can feel the vibration gently pulsing up my arm. Just as I'm about to venture forward alone, I hear a friendly whistle. Murph! Were you missing me, Kara? I was giving up on you, to be honest. Ah, that's not nice. You should never give up on a buddy. Well, I'm glad you're here. I don't mind admitting that I'm a bit nervous. Here, let me put this around your neck. I made a collar for him by drilling into a piece of quake stone and threading some twine through it. I, <clears throat> I don't want either of us to upset the elders. We need all the protection we can get, although I'm not sure this will even work. It's a big risk. Come on, then. Stay close to me. And you to me, Kara. And you to me. I can hear the amusement in his voice as he springs ahead of me and crosses the line into the danger zone. For a split second, I hesitate. I want to see if anything happens to McMurphy. If something does happen, I want to be able to get help. Not making me your cannon fodder, are you, Kara? Just watching your back, Murph. And with one large step forward, I'm over the line. I stand still for a moment to feel the difference. And there isn't any. I feel exactly the same. The same pulsing coming from the quake stone. Only now it seems to be all around me. It begins to tingle. Can you feel that? I most certainly can! And a beautiful thing it is! He's right. It feels really relaxing without being drowsy. 
My mind is super alert and I feel much more energized than I did even a few minutes previously. There are some elders over to the right. They must be able to see us, but they don't seem to be bothered by us being this close. As I take in my surroundings, I notice that there are large rocks that all appear to be made of quakestone. We skirt around the edge of the area, keeping as low a profile as possible. I can't believe we're doing this. Oh, Kara, I wish I could show you your face. Why? Because you're grinning from ear to ear. You look like the Cheshire Cat. Maybe we've gone through the looking glass. Then I see the huge obelisk type of stone which most of the elder cats are sitting around. What do you think, Mac? Quakestone? Has to be. Look how serene they all are. They are completely calm. Some of them are looking at us, but don't seem in the least bit bothered. There is no aggression in these animals. They are in total harmony with each other and their surroundings. Come on, Mac. Let's leave them in peace. We move back to where we came in and gather some of the lumps of stone to take back with us. I can see why they like it here so much. Okay, you, let's get this off your neck. You'll be turning elder if I'm not careful. We walk back mostly in silence. It's a nice silence. Contented. That was it? That gave me nothing! That didn't help at all! Christ. Yeah, that did absolutely nothing. What the fuck? Gotta rest. <sighs> you have a lovely nap and wake up feeling revitalized. Your energy has been restored. Magic! What was that recon for? I don't... Uh, okay. Alright. Cool. Sure. Um. Alright. Last date with Trixie. Oh, I'm nervous. I've been following a familiar sound along the shoreline. I can't see Trixie yet, but I'd know that plaintive song anywhere. It leads me to her cave. Trixie? Can I come in? Wait a minute! I can hear a flurry of activity, shuffling and liquid being poured. Trixie, are you nearly ready? <laughs> it's freezing out here. As soon as the sun goes down, this island becomes ridiculously cold. Come in. Her voice is slow and sing-song. The cave is warm and welcoming. There are flower petals scattered on the ground and little jars of lucilites in every corner. Trixie is stretched out on a rock as though she hasn't moved. Hello, you. Long time no see. Hello, Humi. I wondered when you'd show up. Um, as soon as you invited me, actually. She ignores me and indicates a jar of amber liquid. Help yourself. She's in one of those moods. So I take a sip of the mana juice and make a note to go easy on it this time, remembering how potent it is. So, how's Trix? Great. You've not been around for a few days. She doesn't respond. I thought you were avoiding me. I force a laugh, but now I'm beginning to think I was right. Have I upset you, Trixie? Well, in a way, I suppose you have. Oh, I was kidding. But tell me, what did I... She cuts across me. I don't mean to be rude, but would you mind just shutting up and let me talk for a while? Oh. Um, of course. I'm a little anxious about what's coming, but I do as I'm told, and sit in silence. 
life. She pauses and smiles. I'm not sure if I should respond, so I just smile back. Life is great and all, but sometimes it's not quite as great as you try to pretend it is. You get so used to making the best of it that you stop being aware that it's only silver or sometimes even bronze. I mean, nothing to complain about, but... But then something happens that is so golden, so platinum-plated, rose gold, that the fabulosity of it catches you up like a twister, and it turns everything upside down and inside out so that you're flying and dancing against your will. You're powerless and powerful, and silver will never be good enough again. Do you know what I mean? I open my mouth, but she plows on without waiting for an answer. I feel it now. The fizzing in my tummy, the fluttering of my heart. I am champagne. <laughs> Popping and sparkling, lightheaded and silly. Am I silly? <laughs> I feel very certain and not silly at all. But I can't stop giggling and my eyes are weepy all the time. I know what I want in my heart, but I can't connect it to my head. I feel... <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> Truly happy. Not before happy, which wasn't really like being happy at all, but 24 karat happy, and nothing less will do. There's a long pause. I look down and see that my glass is empty, and I suddenly feel a bit woozy. Okay, that's it. That's all I have to say. Your turn. Oh, um, I'm not very good at speeches, and I don't think I can match yours. A simple answer will do. Soulmates don't come along every day, Humi. We have a chance here to take a leap and see where the adventure takes us. Or forever wonder what we missed. Okay, kids! Oh, God. It is time to take a leap with the witch cat. I do believe. So that we don't get shot. <laughs> Love the cat or die, basically. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Take the leap. Of course I'm in. Together forever. Let the adventures begin. And Trixie and I begin to laugh and laugh until we're rolling around on the ground so that anyone who saw us would think we're a couple of crazy intoxicated cats. <gasps> Yay! Achievement unlocked! Relationship goals! Trixie! Notice how with the women cats, the female cats, I get the relationship goals, but with the men... <laughs> with the men, I suck. Men are confusing. Who can understand the mind of a man? I don't know. Ooh, let's do another extra before we do our last bit with Cat 4. Oh, we can't! Damn it! Too bad. Alright, Ezra, we have to say goodbye to Cat 4. This is it. Unfortunately, but we had a good run. We did everything we could do, but at least we won't get shot to death. Ooh, research two or research eight? Tagging and scanning. Or trial. <gasps> yes, we need to check on Muffin. Oh my God, I forgot about that because the whole the whole cream situation. Let's go check on Muffin. I hope she's okay. Poor Muffin. I arrive at the lab at the usual time. As I walk through the door, the professor is standing right in front of me with a disconcerting smile on his face. Ah, cat full. Perfect timing. Uh, morning, Professor? Have you seen Muffin today? 
I haven't. Why do you ask? See for yourself! He steps aside, and as I enter the tent, I immediately see what he's referring to. Muffin is bounding and scurrying at breathtaking speed, sending everything in her path flying. Crikey, Professor! What on earth has gotten into her? Some time ago, we tried to test a new sample on her, but there was no response at that time. I expect that this is just a much-delayed reaction to that sample. She's like a hyper kitten. Indeed. I have an assignment for you today. You want me to catch her, don't you, sir? Absolutely! You must retrieve some samples for analysis. Skin, hair, and saliva. Right. Okay. The professor chuckles to himself as he wanders out of the lab. He's right to laugh. This isn't going to be easy. Muffin is bouncing all over the place. I stumble around for a while trying to catch her, but she's too fast. I'll have to think this through strategically. Okay. Lure her with food. Sit down. Let her come to me. I don't know. My first response is always food. Because, you know, that always seems to work. Let's do that. I try the one thing that always works with muffin. Food. I stand waiting with a handful of treats. Come on, muffin. I've got your favorite. Muffin stops in her tracks and fixes her huge pupils onto the food. She's suspicious, but she can't resist. She tentatively approaches. Suddenly, she leaps forward. I suppose she thinks she can grab the food and run back before I can catch her. She thinks wrong. After a brief tussle, I have her in my arms. She soon resigns herself to fate. I give her some treats, and she starts purring. I collect the samples with little fuss from her and replace her in her crate. I'm preparing and cataloging the samples when I notice something. Peculiar. Ooh, I notice something peculiar. Excuse me. The hair sample looks brittle, like it could turn to ash in my hand. I glance up at Muffin, and she's sleeping in an unnatural starfish position, as though she conked out mid-leap. It makes me feel uneasy. I go and give her a gentle stroke. She seems perfectly fine and relaxed, but I can't help feeling she seems older than before. I think I'm getting paranoid. God, here we go. It's the end with Cat 4. I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning, I noticed another change in my appearance. Up until now, it's been easy to cover up my transition. I just had to keep on top of removing the excess body hair. Even the stub of a tail that appeared a few days ago hasn't been a problem. Who'd see it? But this new development is definitely a turning point. How am I going to explain the fact that my pupils have turned into vertical slits? Okay, so this is the same kind of thing that Cat 2 went through. I can't risk anyone seeing me like this, so I'm going to hide out for a while and see what happens. Oh, there he is! It's a cat! Ah! I'm exhausted. Can we stop for a second to catch our breath? You're an old, old cat. <laughs> We've only been dancing for an hour. You dance. I'll watch. And she giggles and dances while I recline against a rock in the evening sun. Cooler, but still deliciously warm. How did I get to be so lucky? I look back to when I thought having the virus was the worst thing imaginable. And it makes me smile. The day I decided to throw in the towel and allow myself to become a cat was the first day of a life beyond my wildest dreams. Why would anyone want an antidote? Being a cat is amazing! Being with Trixie is even better. 
I lazily stretch and slowly fall into a nap. Trick settles beside me, the two of us curled up. Our bliss is briefly disturbed by the familiar sound of the fairy arriving at the pier. It seems my replacement has already arrived. They'll never look here, though. We know exactly where to stay safe. I wonder if they'll be as fortunate as me. All right. Unlocked. Chapter 4. All right. Cat 4 in a relationship with Trixie. Three successful dates. Ending achieved. Written in the stars. That's cute. Okay. We've only seen 39.9% of the total game. I have a feeling we're going to have to go through this a couple times. Uh, but we are 62.5% complete with the antidote. So... I'm hoping... I'm hoping by the time we complete one round of this game, we'll be able to solve the mystery, but... Alright! Time for another research assistant. Alright. Cat 5! Cheers to our new research assistant. Chapter 5 I step off the boat and onto Cat Island. I'm full of anticipation about what my first day will bring. Eight hours, one journal, and a wild cat chase later. <laughs> I like how every time you go through this, they like skip the introduction. So apparently this first day brings physical assault and the biggest trauma of my life. Oh my god. There's the gang. Oh, is it awake? Human, we need to talk to you. Save it. I know how this goes, fluffy bum. Blah, blah, catification, blah, blah, evasive answers, blah, blah, antidote, and basically, you need my help. Did I miss anything? Um, no, not really. Wow, you really did read that journal from front to back, didn't you? Front to back. Yes. Are you going to help us or not? Duh. What choice do I have? Fine, I'll help. Whatever. See you after my day job. <sighs> Love that for him. Thank you, Cat5. I return to the camp feeling a bit less grumpy. I'm just about to enter the lab to begin my legitimate work when the catalog beeps. A message without any contact information. I thought we found out it was Mr. Marigold last time. Snitches get stitches? Wait, what? Who the hell? Someone needs to take a f that phone away from Mason Marigold. Uh... The rest of the day is uneventful, just working in the lab with the professor. I cannot wait to start unpicking this mystery. I suppose the cats are my starting point. They must know more than they're letting on. I intend to get to the heart of each of them to see what secrets they may hold. Did we unlock any more extras? No, we didn't. God damn it. What was the point of Sherlock then? Oh well. Who do we have? Kibbles. Ravenpaw has to be last. All right, Kibbles. I'm out in the forest, looking for some shade in a place where I won't be disturbed. I need to be relaxed when I finally read the precious contents of the envelope I'm carrying. It feels like I've waited an age for this moment. Eventually, I find a clearing with a moss-covered tree stump that looks comfortable enough. 
I have a quick check around to satisfy myself that I'm alone before I take a seat and slowly unpeel the flap of the brown wrapper and pull out... My issue of Kanashi Boy! It's such a treat to get some quiet manga reading time to myself. Oh my god! Cat 5 is trash! I love it! Oh my god. I just started to get into it when I hear a rustling sound coming from the nearby bushes. It's not the sort of sound that the wind makes when it ruffles the leaves. It's more deliberate than that. I look over towards the bush and the noise stops abruptly. Almost as soon as I resume reading, it starts again. I try to ignore it and continue with my comic, but it's very intrusive. I feel I'm being watched. Who's there? The rustling gets louder. Hello? I inch my way towards the source of the sound, nervously holding my breath. I reach my arm to pull aside the branches when something bursts out of the bush and knocks me sideways. Kibbles! What on earth are you doing? Were you spying on me? He picks himself up from the ground, desperately trying to style it out. Oh, you're here? I hadn't noticed. I was just looking for something. In a bush? Yeah, I left my... Kibbles looks around frantically for something. He locks eyes on an unremarkable looking flat pebble and picks it up triumphantly. My pebble! I left my pebble in this bush! Found it now! Good! I'd hate to think of what would happen if you lost that. Yeah. Anyway. What are you doing? Um, reading? I hold up the comic book, emphasizing the obvious. Yeah, thought so. You're very observant, Kibbles. <laughs> so, is that Kanashi boy? What? I'm taken aback. Yes, actually it is. Do you know it? And more to the point, how do you know it? Yeah, looks like issue 8. That's right! Now I'm impressed as well as amazed. Kibbles, how on earth do you know? Questions are flooding my brain, but I know I need to play this cool. I don't want him shutting me out. That's an old issue. It looks like he has no intention of answering my questions, so I try a different tack. I'm a little behind, so I brought a couple of back issues with me to bring me up to date. So, which version you reading? Version? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, it's probably the inferior American translation. You really have to get the original Japanese or the European versions to get all the nuance. Oh? It's impossible to truly understand the depth of Fumiyoshi and Hara's relationship in the version you've got. You're a proper fan, then? Could say that, I guess. I'd love to pick your brain sometime. What do you want to know? Does the original version explain how they are able to t enter the third chamber together when Chisato gets turned into a hog? Oh, yeah! That's because she tried to pass through the gate without Isao's approval. Oh, right. That would make sense. That bit was cut for some reason. The American version they're selling these days is plebeian trash. <laughs> so Kibbles is one of those manga fans. That's funny. Well, I like it. Any serious Kanashi boy fan would track down the European translation. Of course. Hmm. I'm not sure, but I don't think I'd be able to get those delivered here. I guess I'll have to make do with the trash version. <laughs> I'd rather read something else than read that inferior rag. Fair enough, but I'm still enjoying this. 
I start to go back to reading my trash, but Kibble suddenly springs forward, grabs the comic from my hands, and runs off into the undergrowth. Hey, Kibbles, bring that back! But he's gone. I wait for a while, not quite believing what he just did. After a few minutes, I lose hope that he'll return and start packing away my things to head back to camp. Just as I start walking away, Kibbles comes crashing back through the bush. Oh, there you are. What was that all about? I got you something. That's when I notice he's holding a copy of Kanashi Boy issue 8, but it's not my copy. This one is in a pristine plastic cover. It looks new. Here, this is my copy. The European translation? Original Japanese, actually. Wow, but how do you understand it? Don't tell me you speak Japanese. Some. Look, I've made my own translation. There are pieces of paper tucked in between the pages with scrawled writing on them. How did you manage that? One of the ones before you. She helped me translate it. One of the ones before me? What does that mean? The previous assistant? Want to read this or not? I'm far more interested in what he's just said. You said helps. Kibbles is looking at the cover of Kanashi Boy, but I sense he's pretending to be preoccupied. He clearly said more than he intended to, and now he's dis distancing himself from it. Are we gonna have interaction with Cat 2 or Cat 4? Hmm? That would suggest they're still here. Where does the circle end? Huh? I'm annoyed that he's obviously trying to change the subject. It's a simple question, human. I'm worried that if I push him too far, he'll disappear into the bushes, so I decide to play along, for now. Where does the circle end? He's watching me intently, and I get the feeling this is some kind of test. Um, the circle ends where it began, probably. Kibbs looks delighted. Oh, cool, you've read it! Read what? Sakuru! I'm sorry, I don't know that one. But you gave the right answer! I have no idea what we're talking about now. Sakuru by Heishi Ketsuki. Ketsueki. Heishi Ketsueki. Damn, come on, Martha, read. You haven't read it? Afraid not. Is it good? Only the best in its genre. Which is... Guro, naturally. And Guro means... Oh god, poor Cat5. Gore, of course. God damn it. Kibbles is absolute garbage. Oh, Jesus. Of course. I wasn't aware that gore was a whole genre. I realized that I'm a bit out of my depth here. I can lend it to you. I have a copy here. Kibbles looks like he's about to dive back into the bushes. Whoa, hang on a minute. That sounds really interesting, but I'm in the middle of Kanashi Boy. So, ditch that and start this! You won't regret it! Read, Sakuru, stick to Kanashi Boy. If we don't want to get shot! <laughs> if we don't want to get shot at the end of this, we have to read Sakuru. Okay. Hmm. Well... Normally, I would finish the series I'm on before starting another, but you've got me very interested in Sakuru, I must say. Wait right there! And he's gone before I can open my mouth. I'm starting to get used to this routine, so I wait patiently. He's back within seconds. That was quick. Where do you keep this stuff? I could tell you, but... Then you'd have to kill me. Whoa, slow down, JJ. It's a bit too soon to be finishing each other's sentences. JJ? Jesse James! Mick Murphy told me all about him. Fastest draw in the Wild West. 
And suddenly he's leaping around with pretend paw guns, pew pewing until he's been shot and acts out an elaborate staggerfall death scenario. Then he's back up on his feet in a heartbeat, pointing at the comic he's placed in my hands. I love this cat. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's universally agreed that it's the grossest manga out there. Kibbles grins as though that's a positive thing. I take a look at the glossy black cover and feel my interest peak. This doesn't look like the sort of thing I'd usually pick up in the comic shop, but I'm certainly intrigued. Great! You're gonna love the bit where Kira's mom stabs her own eyes out because Kibbles! Spoilers! Oh, who cares about spoilers? It feels totally different when you see it with the artwork. I don't want you to tell me any part of the story, Kibbles. Doesn't matter if it feels different. Okay, but just remember one thing. Kibbles, if this is a spoiler, I'll be very upset. The circle ends back where it began. Kibbles! I can't tell if that was an actual spoiler, but I still feel indignant. He holds his paws up defensively. What? You said it yourself! That was a lucky guess. What does it mean, anyway? It's the secret password for Sakuru fans to help identify each other. The mangaka made it up himself. Like the Mason's secret handshake? Yeah, probably. You don't know what the Masons are, do you, Kibbles? It's like a boy band or something? <laughs> He's thinking of Hanson. Close enough. Should we make our own secret handshake? You know, in case someone tries to infiltrate our manga club. Good idea, Kibbs. We don't want anyone getting their mitts on our intelligence. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, if you hold out your hand in a fist formation, and I do this... Kibbs has splayed his claws out as if he's going to scratch me, but pushes his metacarpal pad onto my knuckles. It feels very strange. That's great, Kibbs. Really... unique. Yeah, so, uh... Anyway, I've got a lot of stuff to be getting on with. Important business stuff. I'll have to catch you later, human. I feel a bit taken aback by his sudden change in mood. Oh, okay, Kibbles. I'll get on with this manga then, and we can discuss it soon. Yeah, sure. See ya. I sit down on the tree stump and to get stuck into my new comic when I hear... Fill your hands, you son of a gun! I look up to see that Kibbles has crept around the far side of the trees to ambush me. I spring into action, falling to my knees behind my tree stump. You wouldn't shoot an unarmed cowboy, would ya, you yeller-bellied snake? He momentarily lowers his paws. What? I seize my opportunity. Pew pew! Gotcha! I shoot my finger guns at him. Nuh-uh, I dodged. Kibbles jumps into a roll and shoots his paw guns at me. No, you got me! Ugh! I can't believe this is how it all ends! I grab my chest and stagger onto the floor, doing a very good performance, if I do say so myself. That's what you get when you mess with the sass slinger! I dart my head up. The what? Oh, nothing. What did you just call yourself? I didn't say anything! The sass slinger? No, I don't know what you're talking about. You're boring me, human. I'm going now. No, I mean, that's really cool. I want a name, too. Kibbles looks surprised. I get off the floor and dust myself down. How about the sass sl slinger and his sidekick? The, uh, banter bomb! The banter bomb? Yeah! That's really embarrassing. Okay, well, I'll think about it and get back to you, Kibbles. This has been so fun. See you later, Bants. 
He blows the imaginary gun smoke from each of his little paws and swaggers off into his bush. I feel childish, childly, childishly happy. I can talk, I promise. Jesus Christ. I wonder how old Kibbles was when he got turned. Like, was he some kid that got catified? It really, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder. Anyway, I think I will save the rest of Kibbles' route for next week. Just because um, I will have a longer time available to stream next week. Today I have some other things to do around the house and I have a Zoom appointment later on. So... I think I'm gonna have to have it be a short stream today and then end for the week. But I had so much fun um, and I'm actually wanting to add another stream date to the week. Like some kind of weekday evening as well as Saturdays, if that would be fun. I just, I've been having trouble finding time to edit videos lately. Um, so I think it would be Nice to add another date of streaming. So, we'll see. I'll have to see what date would fit well week to week, even with my retail schedule. And then hopefully we can play two games per week instead of one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate having you here. Um, and to whoever's watching this, uh, later on in the archive. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I love y'all. Uh, and I will see you definitely next Catterday for more perfect date, but hopefully in the middle of the week as well for a new game. I'll see you next time. Bye!